yet gentle and kind. His arched neck was hidden by a thick flowing mane, so I called him Petonia, the pride of the plains. Well, the country was new, and settlers were scarce, and the Indians on the warpath were savage and fierce. Scouts were sent out each day from the post, but they never came back, so we knew they were lost. One day said the captain, someone must go for help to the border of New Mexico. A dozen brave fellows straightway answered here, but the captain he spied me, I was standing quite near. But Tonya beside me, his nose in my hand, said the captain your horse is the best in the land. You're good for the ride, you're the lightest man here, on the back of that Mustang, you have nothing to fear. I was proud of my horse, so I answered you no, but Tonya and I are willing to go. They all shook my hand, and I mounted my horse. I rode down the dark pathway, and turned his head north. The black struck a trot, and he kept it all night, till just as the east was beginning to light. When back behind us, there rose up a yell. We knew that the Redskins were hot on our trail. I rose up and jingled the bells on his reins. I stroked his neck softly, then called him by name. He answered the touch with a toss of his head. His black body lengthened and forward he sped. We were beating the Redskins. The story was plain. And the arrows fell round us like showers of rain. We were beating the Redskins, it was only too plain, when suddenly in my leg, I felt a sharp pain. Red blood gushed forth from Petonia's side, but it never once shortened his powerful stride. Petonia, poor fellow, I knew he was hurt, but he dashed bravely onward and into the fort. By good care, Petonia and I were both well. Of his death long years later, I'll try not to tell. For many a fine horse, I've since drawn the rein, but none like Petonia, the pride of the plain. And now, my friend, you ask me what makes me sad and still. 
and why my brow is darkened like clouds upon a hill. Ride in your ponies closer and listen while I tell of Utah Carroll, my partner, and his last ride on the trail. We rode the range together, we rode it side by side. I loved him like a brother, and I wept when Utah died. We were rounding up one morning, and work was nearly done. When on his side the cattle started in a frightened run. Underneath the saddle, the boss's daughter rode. You tall that very morning had placed a bright red robe, so the saddle might ride easy for to know his little friend. And it was this red blanket that brought him to his end. The blanket now was dragging behind her on the ground. The frightened cattle saw it and charged it with the bound. Lenore then saw her danger and turned her pony's face and leaning in the saddle tried to tie it to its place. While leaning lost her balance, fell in front of that wild tide. Lay still, Lenore, I'm coming were the words that Utah cried. His faithful pony saw her and reached her with a bound. I thought he'd been successful and raised her from the ground. But the weight upon the saddle had not been felt before. His back sit snapped like thunder and he fell by an oar. Then picking up the blanket, he swung it o'er his head and started across the prairie. Lay still, Lenore, he said. When he got the stamp, he turned and it saved his little friend. He turned to face the cattle and meet his fatal end. His six guns flashed like lightning. Their reports rang loud and clear as the cattle rushed to kill him. He dropped the leading steer. On his funeral morning, I heard the preacher say, I hope we'll all meet Utah in a roundup far away. They wrapped him in the blanket that had saved his little friend. But it was this red blanket that brought him to his end. And he stopped to argue some He looked so very foolish We began to look around Cause we thought he was a greenhorn That had just escaped from town We asked him if he'd been to breakfast He hadn't had a smear So the cook opened up the grub box And bade him have a share he took a cup of coffee, some biscuits and some beans, and then he began to tell about them foreign kings and queens. He told about the wars and the fightings on the seas, with guns as big as steers, ramrods as big as trees. He told about Paul Jones, that fighting son of a gun, who was the grittiest cuss that ever pulled a gun. Such an educated feller, his thoughts just come and hurts. He astonished all them cowboys with jaw-breaking words. He just kept on talking till he made the boys all sick. And they began to look around just how to play a trick. He said he'd left his job out on the Santa Fe and was going across the plains to strike the 7D. He didn't say how come it, some trouble with his boss, but said he would like to borrow a nice fat saddle horse. This tickled all the boys to death, they laughed right down their sleeves. Yes, we will lend you a horse, 
as fresh and fat as you please. Old Shorty grabbed the lariat, he wrote the zebra done, turned him over to the stranger, and we waited for the fun. Now Dunny was an outlaw who had grown so awful wild. He could pull the moon and jump straight up for miles, but Dunny stood right still as if he didn't know until he was saddled and ready for the go. When the stranger hit the saddle, old Dunny quit the earth. He traveled right straight up for all that he was worth, a pitching and a squealing and having walleye fits. His hind feet perpendicular, his front ones in his bits. We could see the mountain tops under Dunny at Elver Jump, but the stranger growed up on him just like a camel's hump. The stranger sat up on him and curled his black mustache just like a Sunday border that was waiting for his hash. So he thumped him in the shoulders and he spurred him when he whirled Just to show them flunky punchers that he was the wolf of the world And when he had dismounted once more upon the ground We knew he was a thoroughbred and not a gent from town The boss was standing round a-watching at the show he stepped up to the stranger and said, you need not go. If you can swing the lasso like you rode old zebra done, you're the man that I've been looking for since the year 01. Well, he could swing the lasso and he didn't do it slow. He could keep it spinning for any kind of dough. And when the herd stampeded, he was always on the spot. And he set the herd to milling like a boiling of a pot. There's one thing and a sure thing that I've learned since I've been born. That the educated feller ain't a plum green. I was laying around town just spending my time out of a job and not making the dime when up steps a feller and he says i suppose you're a bronc rider from the looks of your clothes well he guesses me right and a good one i claims do you happen to have any tough ones to tame he says he has one that's a good one to buck and they throw in good riders, he's had lots of love. He says this old pony has never been rode, and the man that gets on him is sure to get thrown. I gets all excited and asks what he pays to ride this old pony a couple of days. Well, he offers a tin spot. I says I'm your man. The Bronx never lived that I cannot fan. No, the Bronx never lived, nor he never drew breath That I cannot ride till he starts from to death Well, he says, get your saddle and I'll give you a chance We got on the buckboard and went to the ranch I waited till morning there right after Chuck Then I went out to see if this outlaw could buck Down in the corral, a standing alone was that old Cavallo, the strawberry roan? Had little pin ears that touched at the tips, and a 44 brand on his left hip. He was spavined all around, and he had pigeon toes, little pig eyes, and a big Roman nose. He was shoe neck and had a long lower jaw. You could see with one eye he was a regular outlaw. Well, I buckles on my spurs, I'm a feeling plumb fine. I pull down my hat and I curls up my twine. When I gets my rope on him, I knew well then. Before I had rode him, I sure earned my tin. Well, I gets the blind on him with a terrible fight. 
Next comes the saddle and the screws it down tight. Then I jump Tony man lifts up the blind. I'm a setting in his middle to watch him unwind. Well he bowed his old deck and I'll say he unwound. He seemed to quit living down there on the ground. He went up to the east and came down to the west With me setting on him and doing my best He sure was frog walking, I heaved a big sigh He only liked wings for to be on the fly He'd turn his old belly right up to the sun Cause he was the sun fishing son of a gun He's the worst fucking outlaw I've seen on the range He could turn on a nickel and leave you some change And while he was pitching his squeal like a shoat I'll tell you that outlaw sure got my gold Well I lose is my stirrups and also my hat I'm a claw in that leather as fine as a bat with a great big jump he then makes a high dive And he sends me a whizzing right up through the skies I turns forty flip flop then I comes back to earth I sat there a cussing the day of his birth Now I know there's some ponies that I cannot ride That some of them's living they haven't all died But I'll bet all my money that no man alive Can ride old strawberry when he makes his high dive Punching cattle, I'm punching the dough. 